Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and the new version of Eclipse version 4.70 also called Oxygen and how to install it and how to use it with the ESP32 and the ESP IDF. Before you start with the development you need the Espressive IoT development framework also called ESP IDF and you get this from GitHub the github.com espressive slash esp minus idf and on the site you have also an installing instruction for your preferred operation system so i'm using linux so i follow the linux install guide and i downloaded the extensa compiler and also i downloaded the idf and follow all the steps that's needed and I also export this. This is very important for your work with Eclipse. So I also export the path variable and also I follow these steps, get the ESP IDF and down here is mentioned also the setting of the IDF path environment variable. So this is also very important to use the ESP IDF with Eclipse. First, we go to the website with our preferred browser of Eclipse, www.eclipse.org and download the Eclipse installer. So as you see here, I'm using the Eclipse installer for my Linux 64-bit environment. And after clicking on the download button, it may take a while. It depends on your internet connection and the available download rate. So to start the installation, I copied the downloaded file to my Eclipse folder and just press on extract here and I extract the whole compressed file to this folder. And I see there's a folder extracted and I change to this folder and start just the executable installer. And now we see the different options. We can install the Eclipse IDE or integrated development environment. And we have the options between Java and C++ and C and many more as you see. But for the ESP IDF, we need the C, C++ environment with Eclipse. So I install this one. And the install may take a while because there were many files that have to be downloaded while running the installer. And sometimes, as you see, my internet connection is not fast enough for the installer. So there are some warnings, but I have no issue with the warnings. Then I install the certificate for Eclipse by selecting the certificate and clicking on Accept Selected. Then after finishing the installation, we are ready to run Eclipse Oxygen for the first time. And we start it. And as we see, we have to choose where is our workspace. And I choose my default workspace folder. And it's not Eclipse minus workspace. It's just workspace in my environment. So if you wonder why there are so many source codes available, my Eclipse installation, I've used already Eclipse Neon, the previous version of Eclipse. So all the files in my workspace are available in the new version. And if you start fresh, then you have a totally clean IDE. But the first steps I now do is just try to compile my available code. And this is just a test. But I show you the steps that are needed to start with your own new small project with the Eclipse Oxygen and the ESP IDF. And here are the steps that I use for my Eclipse development. And I'm prepared a small template to do this. And every time I start a new project, I just copying this template and then start a fresh development by following this six basic steps. And you find the source code for the template in the description. 
First, I start with this ESP32 Eclipse template and I'm just copying the whole template folder to a new example. So call this Eclipse test and then we start with this whole project folder. So the first thing I need to do is I need to change this include XML file and you can use your own preferred editor to do this because we just need to adjust two lines and this is the folder because we don't use this Eclipse template folder anymore. We just use our own test folder. So that's it. We save the file and now we are ready to import our project to the Eclipse Oxygen environment. So let's start Eclipse Oxygen and all we do is we go to File, New and to Make File Project with existing code. And I click on browse, go to my workspace, to the ESP32 folder and search for our small Eclipse test project and press on OK. So that's it. I go to finish and now I see here on the project explorer my files. This is here and next step is to go to properties to C, C++ general and to the paths and symbols. And now we have to use the right folder. I go to includes and then we have to go to the bottom of this page and press on import settings. And I go to browse also back to our workspace, then to our new test folder and open the include XML we have added before and click on finish. So now we have our project ready. We can open maybe some files, the main file. And this is very empty. It's just a small demo task that's opened and we have to implement our code here. So and also the header files just to define our call of my task. This is important for the main routine. So the main routine know, OK, there's a small function called my task. So next step, we have to define our build targets and I go to the build target tab here and search also for our project, the ESP Eclipse test project. And we have to create new build targets like all. And I do this mainly with um, some parallel building. So I also introduce the minus J and in my case, I use eight parallel processes. So I press OK. Next build target, I can also press this button. Build target may be clean. And next one is menu config. But we have to use special build settings because it's needed that we run make in an own window. So in my case, I have to use GNOME terminal minus X and make. But this depends on your environment and your operation system. Because I use Linux in the Ubuntu variant, I use GNOME terminal to start a new window or command line interface. So we can test this already. I start by double clicking the menu config and I see I've got a new window and I can steer the whole settings of the menu config in the window. So let's go to exit for now. And next build target is the flash build target. And we also have to use our own user settings and also GNOME terminal minus X. And I also create a new build target called monitor and also use my own build command to start the monitor in a special window. And next build target can be flash and monitor in combination and also in a new window. So let's do maybe a clean and we see it runs and also a make all and we can see the whole compilation inside Eclipse and not in a new window. And that's all you need for a new project.
just joking. Surely you need to write your own code, but this is the basic steps for running your own project in Eclipse. But before we close for today, we just have a look at the new features of Eclipse Oxygen. So I found this website and we can have a look at the new features of the platform. So the editor is easy extensible. I've seen a video about this and I think this is um, interesting. We now can read some difference between our code and this runs very good with the GitHub tool. Something about images, then we have new dialogues, something about annotations and this is useful uh, compare editor so we can see different different versions of our code. And with this hotkey, we can switch between different editor windows, also useful, and many, many more features that are included with the new Oxygen version. So thanks for watching today. I hope you find this useful, interesting, and hopefully learn something today. And if so, please give my video a thumbs up, or if you not already subscribe to my channel, just subscribe and press the bell button if you want some notifications for new videos. I wish you a nice day. See you next time and bye bye.